The other man highlighted at the event was another who had a rocky road just to get to Washington, starting with a rough and tumble primary battle in Texas. I sat down with CPAC keynote speaker Senator Ted Cruz and asked him if he was surprised that he's taking heat not only from the left, but also from within his own party. I think we've got huge challenges in the country. And, and my focus is on addressing those challenges. I think, I think most Americans are not really worried about political squabbles in Washington. They're frustrated, and they're frustrated because it seems an awful lot of Democrats and, and a fair number of Republicans are not standing up and doing the right thing. And, and so my focus every Thank day you, is Senator. just trying to, like to come to work and do my job. And, and in particular, stand for the Constitution. I think Eric our constitutional Harvard liberties morning, are really being undermined right like now. And, and champion economic growth. Our economy is stagnant, and a lot of people are hurting. And, and that's where my focus remains every single day. You mentioned in your CPAC speech that Republicans and Democrats alike, you question whether many of them have actually read the Constitution recently and if they adhere to it and if they're really familiar with what it is at its core. Um, do you, how do you, uh, you know, reconfigure? How does either party uh, get back to that? Well, I think we're seeing a rejuvenation in the Republican Party. Uh, I mean, I have said for a while that, that I think the best thing that ever happened to Republicans was to get our teeth kicked in in 2008. Uh, because by 2006, 2008, I think Republicans had really stopped standing for principle. And we saw a new generation of leaders step forward in 2010, and we saw more continue in 2012, who were really focused on getting back to our core principles, getting back to the Constitution, and getting back to free market principles. I, I think far too many Republicans uh, had gone along to get along, had, had agreed with Democrats in exploding the size of government, I mean, that's how we've gotten a $16.5 trillion debt. And I think people are fed up. They're looking for leaders to come, roll up their sleeves, and do the right thing. And, and that gives me a lot of encouragement, the new generation we see. Do you get the sense that some, though, on Capitol Hill don't like you calling them on that? Well, uh, look, I think Washington is a place where people get very set in their ways. Uh, on the campaign trail, I, I cannot tell you how many people would look at me, would clasp me by the arm, and they'd say, Ted, please don't go to Washington and become one of them. Uh, don't become, the phrase that, that I liked was marbleized, where it seems like if they've been here a long time, they, they, they start to look like the marble statues. And I cannot tell you how many men and women across Texas said, we're so frustrated. People, they, they sound great on the election trail. And then they go to Washington and they don't stand for anything. And I'll tell you, Shannon, one of the things that's really liberating about coming through the path that our election went through. When I started in the, in the campaign, I was literally at 2% in the polls. Uh, and, and the margin of error was 3%. Uh, nobody gave me a prayer. It was a $50 million primary, most expensive in the country. And we were outspent 3 to 1. And we had the entire party establishment come against me in the primary. And what happened was incredible. I mean, it was tens of thousands of grassroots activists, men and women across Texas, who got on the phone, got on email, got on Twitter, reached out. And we went from 2% in the polls to not just winning, but winning the primary by 14 points, winning the general by 16 points. And, and when I face any decision in Washington, what I think about first and foremost are all the men and women across Texas who looked me in the eyes and said, please do the right thing. And, and I'm not willing to, to let them down. And, and that gives you a whole lot of strength. You know, if some politician in Washington says something mean about you in the newspaper, I think that's really pretty mild compared to the challenges we've got in, in this country and the need we have for leaders to get serious about fixing them. More of our one-on-one -on -one interview with Senator Cruz in the next hour. He raised eyebrows in the Senate this week when he went head-to-head -head with Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein over the Second Amendment. Senator Cruz on gun control at the top of the one o'clock hour.